Well, good morning. It is wonderful to see you today. Glad that you are here on with us this morning. It's Family Sunday, so got a lot of great things planned. The kids are going to be with us during the service this morning. And the Lord has promised that he's got a great day planned for us, and so we're glad that you're here as a part of that. And uh, so if you go ahead and stand up this morning, look around, find somebody that you have not yet said hi to this morning, walk across the sanctuary if need be, and welcome them this morning. Welcome to Sunlight Today.
Romans 10, verses 9 and following, we find these words. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth that one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. We praise God for his word this morning to us and for this reminder that this is all, this is all we need for salvation. He is all we need for life and for everything. So as we, as we come into this time of prayer this morning, it's important for us to reflect on these truths. Uh, I would ask that you be in prayer for some individuals from our church family as well in these days ahead. Keep Randy Rumpel in your prayers for God's healing touch on him. Uh, Randy is back home uh, following surgery this last week. We praise God for that. And we, we pray uh, God's uh, continued healing touch on Randy and on his life. Um, would ask that you be in prayer for Donna Betts. Uh, Donna um, stepped on some glasses last week, ended up having to have surgery. She's uh, going to be laid up here for a couple weeks. Keep Donna in your prayers for God's healing touch on her uh, as well as encouragement uh, for her in these days. Uh, keep Greg Warlow in your prayers. Um, Greg uh, has injured his back. He's dealing with some pain there. And uh, just to pray for God's healing touch on Greg and on his life in these days ahead. Um, and then finally, I'd ask for prayers for my dad this morning. Um, as many of you know, maybe ask for, for updates. He's been battling COVID for a couple weeks now. Um, but uh, last week, I went into the hospital, and he's been in the ICU for about a week now. Uh, he's not doing well. Um, so I cover your prayers for him. I uh, appreciate that. And prayers for him and for my mom and for the rest of the family days, just that God would step in and do a work, so we're believing that, but uh, appreciate, appreciate your prayers there too. Uh, as the worship team continues to lead us, the altars are open, and now's the time that we encourage you if you feel so led to come.
Father, there seems to be so much weighing upon our hearts. Lord, we have lifted up names before you, Lord. And we do thank Randy and asking God that you would just touch him. Lord, you're the great physician, and we trust in you, Father, in all things. God, we've been singing some of these songs, and we're reminded, Father, of who you are. God, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear. Help us to trust in you. To know, Father, that there's nothing that you cannot do. We lift up Donna before you, Lord, asking that you would just bring her a quick healing. We lift up Ray and God just pray. Father, that we once again just trust in a quick healing, a quick recovery. And God, we lift up Lane's dad before you. Father, we're just we're getting so tired of just hearing about the individuals, Lord, being, Lord, Lord, just, I guess, Lord, just being beaten by this. Lord. God, help us to pray in faith. Lord, if we can move a mountain, if we have faith, Lord, just help us, Lord, to pray that and to believe. We're asking God that, that you would just do it a healing there, and, and God, we don't care if you use doctors, nurses, whatever, or if you just come and get out of the bed and go. Father, please, we know that as we lift up our nation before you, God, our nation is need is in great need, Lord, of a God that is seen as the God of the universe, Lord, that he's the creator of all things, a God that is so powerful, Lord, there is nothing he can undo. Do and Father, that we can look at your word and see it as truth, our sword, Lord. That's our offensive weapon. We're asking God that you would be with our nation's leaders, Lord. We think of Afghanistan, Lord, right now, and for our soldiers that are there, and Lord, for lives that have been lost. God, we're asking that you would be with decisions, Lord, that are being made. And they ask for wisdom, God. We're asking that you be with all those families, Father, that have suffered that. Give protection, Lord, there. And Lord, there's, we're thinking of even hurricanes that have come, and Lord, some of them are coming in. Give our nation protection, Father, and those that are there. We know, God, there our church is praying, Lord, unite our prayers with theirs. We love you, Father. Lord, be in this service, Lord, in a special way. Every word that will be spoken, God, that you'll be glorified. We praise you for what you have done. We praise you for what you're going to do. Help us to be a light in the dark world, Lord, that we may by all means save some. Thank you, Father. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. attendance here with us this morning also allows us to partner with you to connect with you in prayer and uh, we've got a whole team of folks that pray over these requests each and every week so we encourage you to take a moment and complete this and then you can just leave it um, in the pew when you exit the sanctuary this morning uh, we also have boxes set up in the back you see each one of the exit doors you're welcome to deposit that in there as well we're out this morning. Plenty of information in the bulletin in regards to events, activities, things coming up in the life of the church. Uh, we encourage you uh, to uh, peruse that at your leisure and to, to jump in um, wherever you're able to. Stuff for kids, stuff for teens. Uh, the, the men's and, and women's ministries are ramping up their activities as we head into the fall. So encourage you uh, to take part in that. Um, want to uh, yeah, just invite you to do that. So um, we wouldn't be able to do all that we do without um, the faithful and, and generous support. Of, uh, of your tithes and offerings. And so now as the worship team leads us, is the time of the service that we would traditionally collect the tithes and offerings. We, we don't pass the plate anymore. 
uh, but we do have those boxes set up in the back uh, that you can deposit those tithes and offerings into, either during this next worship song or at the close of the service this morning on your way out. But uh, we encourage you to do that. We thank you so much for that. Um, we wouldn't be able to do all that we do without your faithful support. So let's pray now over the tithes and offerings before we go any further this morning. Uh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the faithfulness of your people. God, we thank you for your provision in our lives. And God, also all the ways that you provide and all the ways that you come through. And uh, all the ways that you guide us and encourage us and strengthen us. And, and this morning, God, we pray your blessing over the gift and over the giver. God, help us, empower us to be good stewards. God, as individuals, as families, as a church family. God, of all that you bless us with as we seek to love this community to you. We pray these things this morning in Christ's name. Amen. Sure that we will, that we will. <laughs> Fear not. 
So go ahead, go ahead and stand up now and stretch a little bit, okay? Because I don't want anybody tearing anything as we uh, as we get ready to do this. So um, let's do the old uh, down down one end up like this, okay? And the other way. I don't want to tear my suit coat here, but it can happen. All right. And uh, hopefully, oh here we go. There's colors. If you are colorblind, just uh, just go to the corner that everybody else is at. So that's probably the best way to do it. First, now you got to move quickly. That's the key. Okay, so <laughs> keyword there. First question: What kind of Bible do you have? Picture Bible, study Bible, message, or just a regular Bible? No. So, Proceed to your corner now. Red, yellow, green, blue. Here we go. Nobody's willing to admit they, oh, there we go. It, oh, thought maybe we had a person there for a minute who was going to admit to having a message. Okay, good job, good job. If you didn't make it there, then next question. Oh, rapid fire here. Which individual in the Bible do you most see yourself being? Noah, Joseph, Moses, David. 20 seconds. I know this is crazy. I'm just about to get to stand up here and read it. Three, two, one. Next question. What's the coolest miracle that Jesus did? He did a few. What's the coolest one that Jesus did? Feeding the 5,000, red, walking on the water, yellow, healing the sick, green, raising Lazarus from the dead, blue. Here we go, we got some people shuffling around. No head on collisions yet, that can happen. This is the part of the show where people just start to stay in one color. I see what you're doing. Next question, what's your favorite story from the Bible. Favorite story. You can only pick one. Noah's Ark. Red. Jesus' birth. Yellow. David and Goliath. Green. Moses and the Red Sea. Blue. I know what some of you are thinking right now. You're thinking, can we not pick Jesus' birth? Is that an option? Can we, can we do that? Apparently some of you say yes. Next question. What helps you remember verses from the Bible the most? Repeating, writing, seeing, motions, or purple. When Pastor Lyle puts it up on the screen for you, so you just read it off of that. No, that's not an option. Repeating, writing, singing, motions. Time's up. Everybody won. Good job. Give yourselves a hand. And proceed quickly back to your seats. Thank you.
program we're going to spread out over the course of the year. So if you enjoyed BBS this summer, this might be something you want to come to. And we would love to have you come on Wednesday night because we are starting it this Wednesday. Um, it's going to be um, a really good time. We're going to have a good time. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn together about what God says is treasure. And so if you, um, we have imagination station and Bible adventures and games and snacks. So if you like CBS, you will like this and we will all work together on this. So um, that is what we're going to do this Wednesday, unbelievably. It just starts this Wednesday. So um, we are going to get ready to get ready for the treasure. Hey, Miss Cat! <laughs> what? what are you doing here? The last time I saw you, you were on the Rocky Mountains and all wet. <laughs> These are my able helpers. Thank you. Just appreciate it. Yeah. All right. That's good. That's good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to talk. You can see on the seat of this up there, it says upside down. All right. And so our um, lessons today are both about upside down. Mine's a little bit different than his, but that's okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My lesson is about upside down and how your life can be upside down. Now, I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. That if you believe that Jesus came to earth, that he grew up, he taught us about God, he went to the cross and died for our sins, came back alive, now lives in heaven, judging the world, and is Lord and Lord and King of kings of everyone. If you believe that, if you ask him into your life, you ask him to forgive you of your sins, he will come into your life, he'll erase your sins, and he will send you the Holy Spirit to live within you. All right? And when the Holy Spirit does that, it can change you. It can make you see the world differently. Because the world is different when you're seeing it through the eyes of God. It's kind of like you're flipped upside down. But think about it. How is Jesus' life? Jesus is king of kings over everything. But Jesus was born in a stable. Where are kings born? In hospitals, followed, surrounded by doctors and nurses. Jesus was surrounded by animals. Jesus was poor by world standards. Kings are rich. 
It's the opposite, the upside down part. Jesus um, didn't even have any place to sleep. It says in the Bible he had no place to lay his head. He didn't have a bed and a pillow and a room. Kings have palaces, beautiful palaces to live in. And Jesus helped people. All he did was serve, wash disciples' feet, take care of people who were sick, and preach and tell us how much God loves us. What do kings do? They wait, have people waiting on them. They don't do anything. They get waited on. So Jesus' life was upside down from the way kings of the world are. And so when you ask Jesus into your life with the Holy Spirit, your life is going to seem upside down. We're going to play a little game first before we get started, just so we can have a little bit of fun. And I have two assistants, Camden and Odessa, who are going to come and help me. Come on. Camden. They're both me, second graders. And the second graders, they are going to be my assistants. Now, oops, there you go, that's all right. Okay, I am going to draw on this board a house. Let's see how tall it is. Okay, go about here. You know how to make a house. Go basic, a square, and a triangle, and maybe even put a door on it, or a little door on it, and put windows on it, or whatever. You know, just you can use that. Okay. But I need you to draw it, but the thing is upside down. So what do you think you're going to have to do? Draw it upside down house? No. You're going to wear upside down goggles. And then you're going to draw it. Okay? Everything you see in this will look upside down. All right, so I need you to close your eyes because i got to adjust this to your head. Okay? And I've got to get around that pretty pony. Okay, now open your eyes. Oh. Isn't that weird? Okay, now take the cap off the pen. Draw it out. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Now somebody count it out or think about it, but just give you 30 seconds. Okay, ready? Draw your house. Confusing. And what does that have to do with us? Well, sometimes when our world seems upside down when we ask Jesus into our life, because when the Holy Spirit comes in, He's going to remind you. He's going to tell you when you're doing something you shouldn't do. If you feel guilty, it's because He's telling you you shouldn't do that. And your friends may still all do the things that you know are wrong, but now you're seeing it with a different set of eyes. And as you're seeing it, now you realize that's wrong. That's the opposite way that God wants me to do things. And you know, you may hear people, and they do all the time, use God's name the wrong way. Oh my, and then they put God's name in there. And you know from church, from children's church and Sunday school, that that's the third commandment. Watch your words. You're not going to use God's name. And you'll tell your friends, don't do that, that's wrong. And your friends may just laugh at you or get mad at you, and you may lose friends in the process. And maybe you're going to have to start out with a whole new set of friends who now listen to Jesus. And that may make you feel empty. Why don't you look at my sand sculpture here. This is Elisa's. She has one of the, a couple of these. 
The sand is on the bottom, there's water on the top, and then there's air up there. Now, when I flip it over, the sand will start to fall. But like our lives, when we flip things over, when we ask Jesus into our life, at first, it may not feel like anything's different. And maybe you, you're feeling like, I'm empty. I've lost all my friends. I, I don't know how I'm going to, you know, I, I'm not doing the same stuff I used to do. But that's okay, because God's going to make something beautiful out of you. And you may be tempted to flip this back over and say, I want to go back and be friends with my friends. I want to go back to doing the stuff I did before. And the Holy Spirit's going to say, no, don't do that. Do the upside down, the opposite of it. And they will. God is going to change your world and make it beautiful again. And sometimes it's a very slow process. You might think, I want instantly to know everything about my Bible, know all about the Christians in school, and do everything right, but you're not. It's going to take time, and given time, this thing will turn into another beautiful sculpture that's going to form all down on the bottom. Right now my bubbles are keeping it from going where it wants to go, but that's okay. And Satan is going to try to keep you from doing what God wants you to do, but you will. And you have to trust that if Jesus could live an upside-down life, that you can live an upside-down life as well. And do the opposite of the world, but you'll turn into something beautiful, just like this sand sculpture. So as Pastor Lyle gives his message, keep your eyes on this and see what it turns into. It may take a little while, but it's going to look beautiful. And it's going to be upside-down from the way everything else looks like. You can turn my mic off. And kids, if you haven't got your busy bag stuff, they're all back there. Go ahead and grab it. Let me push this back. It'll be okay, man. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> How many of you have trophies at home? Eight. Many of you have eight? Okay. Eight. Oh, eight. Okay. Anybody got more than eight? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anybody got any first place trophies? Few, few. Anybody got any second place trophies? Couple. Anybody got any last place trophies? <laughs> yeah, today they call it participation trophy. But, but it doesn't actually say last place on it. It says we participated. They don't give out last place trophies. Not in elementary school, not in rec league, not in high school, not in college, not in the professionals. They don't give out last place trophies. And the reason why is because our culture says, and we are taught that we must win. We must be first. But Jesus comes along and says, even, it says, if you want to be first, you need to be last. Well, that makes no sense at all. If I want to be first, I can't be last. I, I have to be first. I have to win. Well, everything is turned upside down. But this is the type of life that Jesus lived. He lived the teaching. He lived that teaching every day by spending time with the sick, the poor, the lonely, the humble. And if it's truly our desire to be great. And to live like Jesus, then we must humble ourselves and be the least. That's upside down. How, how does it make you feel when things are upside down? And, and I'm not talking about those times in life where something dramatically happens and your life just changes in an instant. I'm talking about when you're actually upside down. Maybe like hanging upside down on the monkey bars or, or doing a handstand. When you're upside down, the world looks funny. Pat showed us that with those glasses, those goggles. It looks funny. It makes you a little woozy. Up is down and down is up. And you might start, it might start off cool, but then the blood starts rushing to your head and you feel <laughs> a little sick instead of cool. Well, I asked a couple people to come up and help me today. We're going to demonstrate what it's like to be upside down and what happens when we are upside down. So if those two people would like to come forward this morning and help me out, that would be great. The object that I brought with me this morning is a little bigger than what Pat's was, but uh, we're going we're gonna to have just a, a couple minutes of fun here. 
And I say a couple of minutes because I, I don't want Drew throwing up on the platform. <laughs> Jenny's a teacher. She's used to being upside down. So, Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want the two of you to stand in front of the inversion table there. And I want you just to, one at a time, just throw that ball into the trash can. Okay? You can give him a big hand. Give him a big hand. Easy enough. Now, I want you to take the ball again. And Drew, we're going to start with you because we set this up for your height. Why don't you go ahead and jump in the inversion table here. Put your feet in there. Secure? Okay. Now I'm going to give you the ball, girl. Now I want you to throw the ball in the bucket. look at the world from upside down but for the most part we like the world as it is we want it to stay the same we want to, we want our up to be up our down to be down and we don't like it when it changes places but sometimes things do change you move to a new house you move to a new school we just started school around this area about three weeks ago some of you are attending a new school probably with new teachers things are different and it seemed like probably for a while that things were upside down. Maybe they're still a little upside down for you. But there was a time when Jesus and his closest companions, his followers, his disciples, they were on their way to the town of Capernaum. And as they walked, the disciples started talking amongst themselves. You see, they were falling into what the world had been telling them and us. Who's the best? Who's first? Who's the closest one to Jesus? Well, Jesus was up a little further ahead of them, and they were talking really quiet because they figured if they talked quiet, then Jesus wouldn't be able to hear them. And they were doing that. They were talking about who was best, trying to decide which of the disciples was best, who was closest to Jesus. And so they started this conversation back and forth. John says, well, I, I think I'm better. I think I'm best. I, I think Jesus likes me best. Paul goes, no, no, no. Or Peter goes, no, 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 no. No, I, I'm the best. I'm the best. Jesus likes me. Have you ever done that with your friends? Have you ever wondered and ever got together with your friends and started talking about, well, I'm better than they are? And, or Jim is a much better friend of mine than, than they are of him. Well, when they finally got to where they were going, Jesus and the disciples finally got to where they were going, Jesus called them all together and asked them what they were talking about. The disciples got busted. So in Mark 9, chapter 13, Mark 9, verses 33 through 37, we find the words that Jesus told them, and this is what it says. They came to Capernaum, 
When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child, whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Jesus had caught the disciples thinking like the world. But that's not how it works when you follow Jesus. And so Jesus sits them down and gives them a little upside down lesson. And the first thing that the disciples needed to hear and Jesus needed to teach them is that we need to focus our attention on developing a proper focus on others. A lot of people who desire greatness have a focus problem. They try to shift all the focus upon themselves. They think about their own desires, their own goals. And usually the only time they think about someone else is when they're trying to figure out how that person can help them. Well, Jesus told his disciples that the way to be first in the kingdom was to have their focus put on the needs of others rather than on their own selfish needs. And Jesus' words in verse 35 are some tough words to hear, especially in today's world. I mean, over the last 40 years, we have been bombarded with million, a million times by ads, commercials, TVs, or T-shirts, slogans, and songs that tell us to focus on ourselves and our own needs. I mean, Burger King tells you, have it your way. McDonald's says, you deserve a break today. Nike says, just do it. Most people want to be first. They want to be number one. And what Jesus wants his disciples back then to do and wants us to do today is to focus our attention outward instead of inward. To focus our ministries more towards outward things than inward things. To focus on meeting other people's needs rather than the needs of ourselves. And it's good for us to focus our attention on the needs of others without making, without making sure that the focus is on us. And so the first thing Jesus tells them is, where is your focus? Your focus has to be on others. The second thing that Jesus wants his disciples to understand and to do is focus our attention on acts of service. God created this in his image. He created us to work alongside of him in this world. God gave each one of us certain gifts, certain talents, and resources, and they were given to us for a specific reason, so, which is so that they can be used so that we can enjoy life here on earth and bring joy to those around us. I believe every one of us in this sanctuary, contrary to what some of you believe, can learn to play the piano. You can learn to play the notes. You can find out where the notes are. You can, you can put your fingers down and it will create a sound. Every one of us can do that. But those who are gifted with being able to play on the piano make the piano come alive. And they just make it seem effortless. I believe that most people can be taught to sing. But if someone is gifted with a beautiful voice, we're in awe of that voice. I can't draw a stick figure, but someone who is gifted in art, they make the art come alive and it becomes breathtaking. Because God gave all of us certain talents and gifts so that we might all be able to enjoy life here and that we might be able to use them to both make a living and as a means of serving one another. He gave us bodies so that we could work. He made us to be physical and spiritual. He gave us the ability to walk, to run, to use our hands, our mouths, and the rest of our bodies. God gave all of us these things for a reason. Because he wanted us to experience life to the full, and that includes being physical and spiritual. God gave us this wonderful ability to provide for ourselves as well as the ability to help others. And we can share the stuff we have accumulated. We can share our food and our resources. We can share our time. We can give words of encouragement and support. 
We can give people praise and adoration. We can sit with people. We can pray with people. We can even be the first people to say, I am sorry. We can be the first to offer prayer for our enemies. We can do that through giving our time, our support, and our compassion. There are a million ways we can serve one another. For some, they can do physical labor, and for others, they can share some words of encouragement. All of us take the time to look someone else in the eye, and with a smile or words, let them know that we consider them worthy and loved. And it's amazing how you can walk through a store and, and just take the time to send sentence prayers towards other people. It can change the way that you shop, the way you look at the grocery store or the mall. It almost becomes a time where you can, you can just be closer to God going through those things instead of it being a stressful time. Now, we all can't fix cars, repair, or fix refrigerators, freezers, washers, dryers, all those things. We can't all do that. We can't all put together a budget, paint walls, or lay bricks. We can't all plant gardens or fix an amazing meal, but we can do something, be it great or small. We all can ask the Lord to help us focus on actions that we can do to serve one another. And then the third thing that the Lord wanted to teach the disciples and us is this. Jesus, Jesus challenges us to focus on the acceptance of others. Jesus knew that the greatest service we can do for one another is to accept one another, to offer grace to another person, to see others as important and valuable. In Jesus' time, the word for servant and children were actually the same word. Servants and children were considered to be on the same level. They were to remain silent and do what they were told but in verse 36, Jesus takes a child in his arms and gives him a hug and then speaks about receiving and accepting them. Jesus takes a little one and brings them close to his heart. He embraces them. He tells us that we are to do the same thing with all others, not just children, but all people. We are to receive them in our hearts, receive them and hold them close to us, embrace them. We're to treat all people with the same respect and love that we do your own family and are yourselves. And only through the love of Christ can we do such a thing. If we put ourselves first, then there will always be prejudice inside of us. Now we can tell ourselves, no, there wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be prejudiced. But I believe if we count ourselves first, if we have the same thought as the world, the decisions and the attitudes that will exist with inside of us that put us first before anybody else because that's just the way the world is. Jesus says if we truly want to be first, then we must be last. In other words, we are to put our focus on others. We are to put our focus on serving others. We are to put our focus on accepting others. Now, this doesn't mean that you agree with everything that they do, but it means that you love them as Jesus loves them, which is truly upside-down thinking in our world today. Jesus is challenging us to be people of acceptance, people who reach out to share love, people who reach out to create friendships, people who reach out so that they can see Jesus in us, people who reach out so that those people can receive Jesus' forgiveness and grace and the Holy Spirit filling them. Jesus says if you put your focus on others, if you put your focus on serving others, if you put your focus on accepting others, then they will see me through you, and then you will allow me to bring them to the Father. All we need to do is be open and receptive. And believe it or not, we need to be last instead of first. We need to be least instead of the most. Jesus desires us to be first. But in order for that to take place, we have to be last. Will you do that today? Is that something that you can say, I'm going to put aside what the world says and I'm going to turn it all upside down and I'm going to be what God desires me to be.
which is contrary to what everybody else says. Put your focus upon others. Put your focus on serving others. And put your focus on accepting others. If we do that, then we will be first. Will you stand with me, please? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this message that you gave us this morning that was, that was proclaimed in many different ways. Through the object lessons of the upside down glasses, through the inversion table, through all of this, Lord, what, what you're really trying to tell us is that if we continue to follow the ways of the world, we will always put ourselves first. We will always desire to be number one. But Lord, what you want, you, you want us ultimately to be first. But to do that, we have to be last. We have to be the least. And Lord, in order for us to do that in this world today, it, it definitely takes a heart change. And Lord, we're asking this morning that you will change our hearts. That Lord, that you will speak to us and that you will help us to see the things around us. You will help us see people differently. You will help us to put our focus on, on other people. Instead of, of what our needs are, we, we think about well, what are their needs. Instead of, of focusing on, on serving us, we focus on serving others. And Lord, you ask us in this ever-changing world to love people as you love people. And that's to accept. Accept them as you accept them. And so Lord, we ask you to help us to be able to do that. Because Lord, I believe that all of us would say we, we want to be where you want us to be, Lord. We want to do what you desire us to do. And Lord, if you want us to be the least so that we can be first, then Lord, help us to do that in our everyday life. So we ask now that you would just come upon us, Lord, and that you would just continue to speak to us throughout this week about this whole idea. And Lord, help us to be able to change our lives. So to the world, it looks like we're living upside down. But to you, Lord, we're living right side up. And so we ask now, Lord, that you would just release us with your benediction and your blessing, that you would follow us throughout this day and this week to come. And we ask these things in your name. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 You are dismissed. Have a great week. God bless.